Why are you still trash talking me after we made I'm up? That's what I want to know. You. You're talking shit about me to Jen Fessler. You talked shit about me to Melissa. I was telling Everything Jen Fessler absolutely... my experience and what yes. happened with us. You don't it's have to go talking about it's experiences. Stating... Again, all you're over telling the place. me what to talk about. You I know what? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss the Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13, episode 5. And first things first. We are finally moving along with the storylines. It's no longer just focused on the Teresa versus Melissa and Joe Gorga drama. And thank God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because I was getting a bit tired and a bit bored. And finally, we have some fresh new drama. And I am here for it. And Miss Danielle, I still have some questions about this story regarding you and your brother. But without further ado, let's just jump right on into this recap because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. Now we start off the episode with Danielle at home. She is going over her daughter's grand entrance because her daughter Valentina is turning five. Now, one thing about it, I think that Danielle has the cutest family. Her kids are adorable. I love how her daughter Valentina has such a big personality. Like she has all that attitude, all that sass, just so cute. But while they're going over her daughter's grand entrance for her party, we find out that it's gonna be a Barbie theme because her daughter loves Barbies. And I was here for it because as a kid, I love Barbies too. I had the Barbie dream house. I mean, I had the Barbie Jeep, like, listen. <laughs> But Danielle says that she loves throwing her kids over the top productions when it comes to their birthdays because she has very sad childhood memories. And we remember that her parents got divorced, I think when she was eight or nine. So she's trying to overcompensate by giving her kids what she didn't have. I thought it was so cute when Danielle was asking Valentina, like, who's coming? Are you excited? And Valentina said, oh yes, girl, all my boyfriends are coming. Ethan's gonna be there. Austin's gonna be there. And they were like, boyfriends? Like, Miss Mamas, you are only five years old. <laughs> And I said, the way Miss Valentina reminds me of myself when I was her age, because I really thought that I was grown. I told you guys a story on last night's live where for my fourth grade talent show, I got up there and sang Christina Aguilera's Genie in a Bottle. <laughs> So I know all about trying to be grown at a very young age. <laughs> if you want the full story, you'll have to watch the live, but I just laughed so hard seeing how Valentina was like, yeah, girl, my boyfriends are coming. I said, I know that's right. <laughs> so now we learn from Danielle that she's invited Jen Aiden, Teresa, and Rachel Fuda to the party. And then Danielle goes on to say that there's so much beef going on between the other women and they're gonna see each other on Friday at Jen Fessler's house because Jen Fessler is hosting a Southern themed brunch. So she's like, they better sort all their problems out there because I promise you, if they bring it to our daughter's party, it's gonna be a problem. Now we jump to this next scene with Rachel Fuda. She's at the Jersey Shore. They have a beach house there, and we see that her family's coming over. She has a younger brother. I think she said that they're four years apart. Her grandma's there, and we also meet her parents. Now, it was a cute family scene, but it wasn't all that interesting. And when she brought up to her parents and her grandma that she wants another child, and I have to be honest with you guys, there's a part of me that feels like Rachel saying this for a storyline. I could be wrong, but they already have two babies under three, and her husband and stepson do not seem on board at all. Because even her stepson was like, girl, what? <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Fuda's grandma had me screaming because when Rachel told the story of the argument that she got into with Jennifer Aiden at Teresa's party, and she was like, yeah, she called me an idiot. Like, she's a shitty person. And then her grandma said, don't ever use that word in front of me again. And they were like, what word, idiot? And she said, no, I thought you said something else. Now the word that the grandma used, was that a slur? Let me know. I know I have quite a few Italian subscribers, so let me know down below. But they were like, Grandma, we didn't say that. And she was like, oh, never mind. I need to put my hearing aids back in. 
Now, this short scene with Melissa and Antonia was cute. They're doing some driving because Antonia is 16 and she needs all the practice that she can get before she gets her driver's license. So they're driving to the coffee shop and Antonia was so afraid of pulling up into the drive-thru. So she got out the car and made her mom drive in. I said, now girl, how do you expect to get your license and have your own car if you're too afraid to pull up in the drive-thru? <laughs> <laughs> but Melissa brings up Teresa's party and she says, as you know, your dad didn't go. All the drama that's going on between your dad and your aunt. I don't want you or your brothers to get roped up in it. And then she wants to know if Antonia is in touch with her cousins. So Antonia says that she's still close to her cousins. They do talk and hang out. And when they do, they don't discuss what's going on between the adults. So I found that to be interesting because we saw in the last episode that Gia said that every time there's beef between the adults, the cousins are automatically separated. And let's be honest, Antonia knows that her cousins do not like her parents. Knowing that, you're already going to have some ill feelings because those are your parents. And it's like, well, how dare you not like my parents? So again, I don't really know if I believe that Antonia is that close to her cousins. And of course, we jump right over to the next scene with Teresa and her girls, and they're at a bridal shop in the city, and the wedding dress that she was trying on, she looked really good. And of course, it would not be a scene without somebody not bringing up the drama between the family. Because Teresa's like, so did you guys have fun at the party the other night? Did you see your aunt Melissa? Did you talk to her? And Gia and Milani said, yeah, I mean, it was real brief. It was a cute hi bye because we haven't seen her in a year. So now we learned that last summer they were hanging out all the time. They were down at the shore having a good time, and now all of a sudden, it stopped. They haven't seen their aunt and uncle in a year, and G is confused as to what happened. So now, Melania says that your brother should be walking you down the aisle, and then she adds that if their uncle does not attend the wedding, then it's a wrap. And that was so funny that Melania said that, because we found out while they were still filming that Joe and Melissa skipped the wedding. And I have so many thoughts about that, that is such a big F you, and there's no coming back from that. So now we see Jennifer Aiden and Melissa going out for lunch. Now remember that Jen and Melissa have had a very interesting relationship. They have not always gotten along. Last season, they were about to fight each other down at the shore. That was a hot mess. But Jen and Melissa are willing to put all that aside and start fresh. So Jen says that she's excited to have a friendship with Melissa. And I have always said this, I have always gotten the vibe that Jen Aiden is jealous of Melissa and that's why they can't get along. Now, before anybody says, but Jennifer Aiden has more money than Melissa, it's not always about money. Somebody could have more money than you, more possessions than you, and still be jealous of you. They could be jealous of your looks, your swag, your confidence, the fact that other people like you. Like, don't always think that because somebody has more money than you that they can't be jealous. I have always gotten that vibe that Jennifer Aiden secretly wants to be Melissa. I don't know. I just, I've gotten that vibe. And this might be petty of me, but I thought it was interesting that Melissa ordered the watermelon martini and the salad and Jen ordered the same thing. I said, girl, you didn't want anything else? You had to get the same exact meal and drink as Melissa? I know I might be reaching, but I just said, okay. <laughs> so they toast to starting fresh. And now Jen says, I never not liked you. All I said was, I don't believe that you and Joe want another baby. So now Melissa jokes around about how so many of her friends who are 40 are having babies. So we learned that Bill wanted more kids and Jen is like, absolutely not because you barely are around for the kids that we have now. Now I was like, Bill, you guys already have five children. That's a lot. How many more kids did you want? Seven, eight? Like, I was real surprised to hear that. Now, I'm not a parent as of yet, but personally, I feel like after a certain amount of kids, do you really have the time and the bandwidth to give every single child an adequate amount of attention? I feel like 
when you start having, you know, five, six children, somebody kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Like somebody feels neglected. I don't know. I mean, again, I'm not a parent. I'm no expert. But to hear that Bill wanted more kids and they already have five kids, it's like, Bill, you're never home. Like, what are you talking about? So now Melissa wants to know, how are Bill and Jen doing? She's like, are you guys good? So Jen says, well, we're no longer fighting about Bill's cheating, but we are fighting about the kids. It's like, he's my boss or something, and he'll try to chastise me for how I raise the kids but he's never home. Now, I don't care what anybody says, but I am willing to bet that they are both miserable in that marriage. The way Jen seems like she is so over it, and then to hear that they're now fighting about the kids, it's just like, y'all do not seem happy. And then hearing Jen say that he treats her like he's her boss, right there, I'm like, yeah, it's giving Lisa and Lenny. If you guys watch Miami, you guys know that their dynamic was off. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's off like that in Bill and Jen's marriage. And I also thought it was interesting when she said, we are no longer fighting about the cheating. And I said, but I get the impression that Jen is still pissed about it and she's trying to bury it. I just don't think that Jen has fully processed the affair and she doesn't want to think about it now. So it's like, okay, let's focus on something else but she's still upset by it. All in all, I think that their marriage is a hot mess. So now Jen says, that's the reason why I called up Jen Fessler about a marriage counselor because me and Bill are having some issues. We started talking about Margaret after I asked her about the marriage counseling. So she goes on to say that she feels like Margaret doesn't like her and is always trying to find an issue with her. I think the real issue with Margaret and Jennifer Aiden Margaret feels like Jennifer Aiden is putting on a front. I think that she gets tired of Jennifer Aiden pretending like her life and marriage and her home life is so perfect when it's not. And I also think that Margaret hates the fact that Jennifer Aiden brags all the time. And I think that's what gets on her nerves. And I think that Jennifer Aiden, she doesn't like the fact that Margaret's always all over her about stuff. And that's why they can't seem to get along. So Melissa somewhat agrees with Jennifer Aiden. And she says, I will say this. I think that Margaret is hard on you and doesn't give you a pass. So now they bring up the fact that Margaret fell out with Siggy, Danielle, and her friend Laura who is trying to get on this show. Now, Jen, Siggy, and Danielle Staub are nuts. Why would anybody want to be associated with either one of them? So it's not really the read that you think it is, talking about, oh, well, she can't keep friends. She fell out with them. Well, I mean, yeah, they're both crazy. And if you see Siggy now on Instagram, giving very much January 6th, if you know, you know. But nobody in their right mind would fault you for falling out with those two. And this woman, Laura, is giving desperate, thirsty, and she's just mad that Margaret couldn't get her on this show. So Jen spills some tea and she says, well, I do have to ask you something. When I talked to Margaret's ex-best friend, Laura, she did tell me that when you and Margaret would go out, Margaret would encourage you to go cheat on Joe with a ball player, is that true? So Melissa says, well, no, not exactly that, sis. When me and Joe were having issues a few years ago, Margaret would tell me, like, girl, if Joe doesn't act right, just know that you could get a ball player, any man that you want. What a good girlfriend would say to you when you're having troubles with your man. So Melissa clears it up that she told Joe what Margaret told her and that they're good. So here goes Jen reaching and she's like, what friend? encourages you to leave your husband. Who does that? Now, let me just stop for a minute, right? What I'm about to say, just listen. I understood exactly what Margaret was doing and I'm not mad at it. A lot of older women have told me it's good for them to know like, if you don't want to act right, somebody else will. Don't get it twisted. Like nobody's sitting around here desperate waiting on you. And that's what Margaret was doing. Like, girl, just so you know, you still got it. The body is still snatched. The face is still beat. And if Joe is out here in these streets, just know that you can leave him and get somebody else. And that is how a good girlfriend will talk to you. 
I didn't find anything wrong with that. Jen, on the other hand, is from a different culture where they believe in the man can do whatever he wants and you have to stick it out for the sake of having the perfect family. So in Jen's mind, she can't comprehend that. And that's no shade. There's this viral clip on TikTok. And when I tell you, I screamed when I saw it. It's this pastor and she's like, I told my husband the other day, if you don't want this blessing, another man does. But Jen goes on to say that Melissa needs to watch her back and keep her eye out when it comes to Margaret. I said, girl, if you don't stop it. Now we get to the day of Jen Fessler's Southern Brunch. And Jen Fessler has a pretty home. She has her staff there. The food looked delicious. She had the chicken and biscuits. My mouth was watering. I said, come through, Jen Fessler. And we know that Jen Fessler loves to eat. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so you know that that food was really good. But all the ladies start arriving. Margaret and Melissa get there first. And of course, Melissa brings up her lunch with Jen Aiden. So she's like, girl, Jen Aiden was not here for you. She was telling me that I need to watch my back around you. And she thinks that it's really sad that you're trying to break me and Joe up. So Margaret's like, excuse me? All I was saying was that if Joe wants to act up, you can get yourself a ball player, anybody. If J-Lo can get A-Rod, you can get whoever you want. Then she says, and if me and Jen Aiden were friends when Bill was cheating on her, I would have called her up like a real friend and told her, girl, leave that man, F him, take all of his money and find somebody else. And I said, I know that's right. And me and Margaret are right here because one thing about me, I'm going to tell you to leave him and find somebody better. I'm like, no girl, why are you crying? You're too pretty to be crying over a man. Stop this. Wipe those tears go out and get you somebody 10 times better, okay? Like, no, we're not crying over men, no. Not in 2023, we're not. So now, Rachel, Fuda, Dolores arrive, they all go outside, and now they're all making small talk. I think Margaret goes on to ask Rachel Fuda what her plans are for the weekend. So Rachel says, oh yeah, me and my daughter were invited to Danielle's party for her daughter, Valentina. So now Melissa's like, oh, well, who does she invite? So Rachel Fuda says, oh, I was invited, Jen Aiden was invited, and Teresa was invited. So now they start discussing Danielle, and now Margaret brings up how extra Danielle is on Instagram. So now Melissa brings up the reason why Danielle and her brother don't talk because of how extra she is on Instagram. And Dolores chimes in and says, but that doesn't make any sense though. Why would you fall out with your sister over Instagram? And now speak of the devil, Danielle arrives. And now Melissa brings up how Danielle is low key a stage mom. She's like, yeah, on your Instagram page, you have your daughter singing and you know, girl, you're a lot. So now I think it's Rachel Fuda who goes on to ask Danielle about why her and her brother don't speak. So Danielle says that he was being really nasty to her about her Instagram post. She blocked him. And because of that, he went crazy and told her, don't come to my wedding. So they're all confused. Like, again, this story isn't adding up. You can't tell me that her Instagram caused all this. Now, the same way that they have questions, I have questions too. Danielle, no offenses, but I'm not buying this story. Something more had to have happened because I refuse to believe that two grown ass people are no longer speaking due to you being silly on Instagram. I'm willing to bet that it's something more and you're too embarrassed or too ashamed to tell us what really happened. But this story is not adding up, sis. I'm sorry. The math ain't mathin'. I notice that every time Jackie appears in a scene, the camera barely pans to her, and I know she has to be hurt. To go from full-time to friend of, and now you can't even get a lick of camera time. I mean, the most camera time Jackie's gotten so far was at Teresa's party when she got into it with Danielle. But anyhow, she arrives, and now Teresa arrives. So the minute Teresa arrives, 
Melissa brings up Jennifer Aiden and she wants to know where do the ladies stand with her? Dolores says, look, at this point, I just want peace. I'm not trying to argue with anybody anymore. That's where I'm at with it. Then Rachel Fuda interjects and says, well, last time I saw Jen Aiden, she was screaming in my face at Teresa's party. So, so I don't really have too much for her. So Margaret weighs in and says, when it comes to Jen Aiden, she never wants to move forward and put things to bed. And then Margaret says, and I find out from Melissa that she was talking about me when they went to lunch the other day. Now, just when they finish talking about Jennifer Aiden, she arrives. It's already a bit tense because remember that Jennifer Aiden does not get along with Rachel Fuda, Margaret, or Dolores. So she's battling with half the cast at this point. So now Jen Fessler gets up to give a quick toast and she's like, thank you guys for coming. I'm not one to brag. And when she said that, I think Jackie interjected and she makes fun of Jennifer Aiden because Jennifer Aiden is always bragging. So now Jennifer Aiden says, no, I don't brag. I just explain things. Baby, don't lie. Jen Aiden brags, and it is what it is. When she first joined the show, the way she went on and on about the house, she was like, oh yes, we have 16 bedrooms and 18 bathrooms. It's like the Taj Mahal of Paramus. And don't get me wrong, because I love a good flex. I'm here for it. You know, sometimes you just have to let some folks know what it is. I'm here for it. Bling, bling, bling. Bitches is mad. <laughs> but Jen, what we're not gonna do is pretend like you don't brag. You do, just own it. In that moment, I would've said, yeah, you know, sometimes I do flex on these girls. You know, I have to let them know. I would've, I would've owned it. I wouldn't have lied and said, no, I don't brag because that's just a lie. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, Margaret's already pissed and she's like, no, Jen, you do brag. So they go back and forth about that. Jen Aiden says, again, I explain things and you interpret it that way because you don't like me. So Margaret says, no, girl, it's about hearing other people's points of views and just taking it all in. You brag. So now Teresa interjects, trying to break it up. And now Margaret brings up what she heard when Jennifer Aiden and Melissa went out to lunch the other day. So she says, Jen, why are you trying to sway my friend's opinion about me? So Jen Aiden says, girl, what are you talking about? Whose opinion am I trying to change? And now Margaret says, you went out to lunch with Melissa the other day and you told Melissa that she needs to watch her back and watch out for me. When I tell you that this argument between Jen, Aiden, and Margaret went from zero to 60 like that, the way they were at each other's throats, they were screaming. That's what you want Are you So Margaret starts screaming that, that Jen Aiden does not have genuine friendships with anybody other than Teresa. And now Jen Fessler jumps in and she tells Jen Aiden that Jen was talking about Margaret and that is considered trash talking. Then she goes on to say that Margaret had not said a bad word about Jen Aiden to her. So the fact that Jen Aiden was trashing Margaret, that's a bad look. So at this point, Jen Aiden brings up what happened last year and she says that Margaret did her wrong, not the other way around. Now, Jen, I've said this so many times, why are you blaming Margaret? Blame your husband. If Bill had not cheated on you, you would not be in this boat. I cannot stand women who blame other women and not their man. Even if Margaret had not said anything about the affair, it would have come out anyway. You're on national TV on one of the hottest shows. Let's be real right now, Jen. You really thought that you could hide that affair forever? Eventually, that woman would have come out with the news or somebody else would have exposed it. So the argument gets so bad at this point. I mean, they are going for blood. So Jennifer Aiden says, you wish that you had a family like mine. You don't know what that feels like. And then Margaret says, well, if you wanna go there, then you wish that you had a good marriage. So now Jen Aiden says that Margaret is so jealous. Margaret says, jealous of what? 
And then Jen Aiden says, you encourage people to leave their husbands and get with ball players. You want families to break up. And I said, now, Jen, can you stop it? And also, can we please get out of that train of thought where it's better to be a family unit, even if somebody's treating you poorly and cheating on you? I will never subscribe to that train of thought where, well, don't break the family up. I think that kids should see their moms be happy, healthy, whole, being treated well, with respect. Jen Aiden having that old school mentality is very sad, in my personal opinion. The fact that you can turn a blind eye to somebody cheating on you for the sake of having your family intact I'm sorry, sis, but that's not it. But I was getting irritated at how Jennifer Aiden was trying to twist things like Margaret wants to break families up. That's not what she's doing. Margaret is saying that if your man is out here in these streets doing wrong, you have every right to say, you know what? Shout out to everybody. I had fun. I'm gonna put myself first and find somebody else who will treat me right. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Shout out to everybody. I had fun. Good, I gotta be good. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, the argument was escalating. I mean, they were screaming at the top of their lungs. So now Jennifer Fessler gets up. She starts screaming. She's like, you guys shut up. Stop it. I have neighbors. This is not Teresa's house. So please don't do this at my house. So now Teresa says, yeah, it's not my house because I have six acres. How many acres do you have? And I was like, now Teresa, there was no reason for you to be shady. Jen Fessler getting up to scold them didn't do anything because Jen Aiden and Margaret are still going at it. Margaret says that Jen Aiden is a disgrace. And then Jen Aiden says, girl, shut up. You're the old lady in the corner with that driving Miss Daisy hat. I said, not driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> Jen Aiden definitely has a mouth on her. She low key gives me the Candace of this franchise when it comes to an argument, because I will say that nobody else is really quick with the reads on this franchise. Like she could never be any match for Candace or Kenya. Like, let's be clear. But on Jersey, she, I guess, is the reader of the bunch. So Margaret gets up to leave. She's like, I'm not doing this. And when I tell you that Jen Fessler had me on the floor, she said, Margaret, you're not going anywhere. Sit your ass down and enjoy this brunch. I said, Jen Fessler was not having it. And now Jen Fessler kicks Jen Aiden out. She's like, Jen, I just can't do this anymore. Please leave my home. Jennifer, I have to ask you to leave. I'm not doing this anymore. I was just anymore. gonna say I wanna Okay, leave. I'm not doing this. Yeah. It's enough. All right, well, then I'm gonna leave too. I can't do this for another second. Thank you for a lovely afternoon. Oh God. So Jen Aiden says, well, that's fine because I want to leave anyway. And now Teresa gets up to join Jen Aiden and she's like, yeah, I'm gonna leave too. So as Jen and Teresa are walking out, Jen Aiden says that Margaret is so jealous of her. And I was like, girl, again, I do not believe for one minute that Margaret is jealous of you. I think that it's a personality thing, but I do not get jealousy. I don't. I think that Margaret feels sorry for you, if anything, but I don't get jealousy. So Jen Aiden says in her confessional that she loves the life that she and her husband built and that Margaret doesn't know anything about that. And Margaret is jealous and wants to break up a happy home. And then she goes on to say that she's not the type of woman to run from the first glimpse of trouble. Now, Jen, here's where I need to call you out yet again, because you've made it clear that you don't think that Bill listens to you. You feel like Bill treats you like you're an employee. You think that he doesn't have your back. You're still upset about the affair. So now for you to say that you guys have built this dream life together and how much you have this perfect family and a happy home, well, that's a lie. I feel like Jen Aiden is the type of woman who wants to convince herself that she's fine with stuff when she's really not. I think that deep down she's upset, she's miserable, and she probably feels stifled in the marriage, but 
because she doesn't want to feel like the other woman won, she'll stick it out. There's nothing wrong with starting over. I know that everybody's different, but for me, cheating is a deal breaker. And I've told you guys that many times before. So personally, I would have been out and I would have taken half of all that money if I had been married to Bill and he cheated. I don't know. I just feel like Jen is miserable and she wants to pretend like she's not. So we get to the final scene of the episode and it's the day of Valentina's fifth birthday party. So Danielle is excited. The venue looks great. Valentina was so excited. All her friends showed up. And now we see Teresa and Louie arrive, Jen Aiden and her daughter Olivia, and Rachel Fuda and her two-year-old daughter. So now Jen Aiden and Rachel, they sit down to talk. Rachel's like, Jen, how are you doing after Jen Fessler's brunch? And Jen Aiden says, you know, I was trying to keep my composure. Then she goes on to say that she feels like everything that she says gets spun around, just like with me and you. So now Jen says in her confessional that she tried to call Rachel up and talk about their messed up noses. Then she says that it feels like Rachel Fuda threw her under the bus and she thinks that Rachel Fuda is sneaky. Then Jen goes on to say that all she was trying to do with Rachel was brief her on the history between her and Dolores and not try to badmouth her. She's like, Dolores did something effed up to me and I was just telling you how I felt. And as Jen Aiden was talking, Rachel was like, okay girl, this only makes sense in your head, but if you say so, then we'll go with it. But it's clear that Rachel Fuda and Jen Aiden are not going to be the best of friends. They're gonna be cordial at best. So at this point in the party, Valentina has her grand entrance. It was so cute. And then we see Teresa and Louie arrive. They're mingling, talking to everybody. And of course, Teresa walks over and starts talking to the ladies. And who do they start talking about? Margaret. So you have Jen saying that Margaret's always on her, always wants to argue with her. And then she says that Margaret looks like somebody with a wig on. I couldn't get the name, but I couldn't stop laughing. I said, baby, the way Jen is always coming for Margaret, like she does not rest. <laughs> and you're gonna always get it again and again and again. So then Teresa says that when it comes to Margaret, Margaret is a better friend than she is as an enemy. And then the episode ends with Teresa telling Rachel that when it comes to Margaret, do your homework and pay attention. Now, when it comes to Teresa, Margaret, and Jennifer Aiden, there is always going to be some tension there. It is clear that they will never see eye to eye. I think that Teresa is still holding a grudge against Margaret from last year. I don't think that she fully got over what happened. I think that Jen is also holding a grudge. And because of that, they're both trying to sway the other ladies about Margaret. Y'all, it was a great episode. Definitely a step in the right direction because I could not take hearing any more about this whole Teresa versus Joe and Melissa. So I was here for this argument between Jen, Aiden, and Margaret. It gave me all that I needed. It was funny. It was explosive. Jen Fessler getting up and screaming, kicking Jennifer Aiden out. I mean, chef's kiss. Talk about a scene. But I think that Jen Fessler will probably be a full-time cast member for next season. She is definitely growing on me. She definitely won me over when she said, Margaret, sit your ass down. You're not going anywhere. I said, well, yes, ma'am. But guys, Jersey's heating up. I'm enjoying it. And thank you guys for watching my recap. I hope you all enjoyed and you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye.